Hi, good morning everyone. So in this uh, tutorial, we will understand how to activate the domain separation in ServiceNow and how can we create the uh, domain and other companies in ServiceNow environment. So uh, this is my personal instance where I'll uh, demonstrate how we can do that. Okay, so before we activate the plugin, let's have uh, you know, the understanding of the layout which we can see here. So uh, if I just write the domain here, I'm not able to see anything. So domain application is not installed in the system right now. Okay, uh, another thing is uh, you can see here update set and application, but there is nothing related to the domains. So once we have the domain separated uh, uh, plugin installed, then we'll have another entry for the domain. Okay. Okay. So, uh, how we can activate it? To activate it, you need to go to uh, in manage your instance. So, when you click on manage your instance, this is the page which you are able to see. You need to go to action, activate plugin, and you can see here domain support, domain extension installer. So, this is the plugin you need to activate it to have the domain separation. So I clicked on the activation now. So it takes some time and uh, once it's done, uh, we will proceed. All right, now we can see uh, the domain uh, plugin is installed. Now I'm just refreshing my uh, instance to see uh, you know, domain related uh, details in, in my instance. Okay, uh, to check whether it's installed properly, I'll first go to uh, the application menu and write domain. So I can see a few entries related to the domains. Okay, uh, I can go here in the settings and I can see the domain is also available here. And uh, by default, the global and uh, other sample uh, data comes. Okay, so this is uh, the, uh, so show domain picker in the header. So if you are working in a domain separated environment, it's advisable to have this uh, uh, domain picker for the developers and admins so that you can um, understand uh, in which domain you are working in. Okay, so if you have a look here, global is the global domain where uh, whatever policies and process you define that will automatically inherit it to all these uh, uh, companies and the sub companies. Top is the MSP, top is the uh, parent company where we have Cisco, Initac and other uh, companies as a child of top. Okay, so this icon will just show how this hierarchy looks like. Okay, so uh, to have a look, I'm clicking on the domain map. So domain map does show the hierarchy level of uh, the setup which comes in. So you can see this is the top level process flows down from here overrides from global processes. These are the uh, these are the child companies. So domain contains top for company data across. Okay, let's have a look on uh, some of the data how it, how it looks like. <coughs> so if you go to domain okay uh, this is the top so if you see the top we don't have the parent identify means this top is the parent and top is uh, set as a primary so keep in mind only one company can be set as a primary domain and uh, uh, you know, again uh, like you know the type of that company is MSP so this is the MSP any policies process defined in the top will automatically inherited for all child okay let's have a look on uh, one of the uh, child company so cisco is one of the child company where the parent is top <coughs> so you can see in companies uh, you know this is this is uh, the child company and in companies we have the same details have entered. 
so it will be visible now to the uh, users okay so let's create our own uh, parent company and uh, some of the child companies and then we'll uh, see how this hierarchy looks like okay so before uh, before i proceed let's have a look uh, here as of now right now uh, top is the primary domain where you can see the primary as true and it's active rest all i made inactive uh, so that it should not uh, be visible in this uh, hierarchy okay so i'm creating uh, three new domain now one is for the parent so i'm keeping the same name parent so that we can identify it's a parent domain okay we'll mark as a xp and this is the parent itself so we'll keep the parent empty we'll make it primary just save it okay so in parent uh, because this is the domain so we'll have the same company name also so parent company is there in parent domain and this is not the customer this is the msp so i'm just i'm not clicking anything here okay, submit and this is done update so uh, one parent company or parent domain has been created not let's create two other uh, companies and domain so abc is the other one i'm creating where we will keep the parent uh, as the parent uh, the parent will make the you know parent as a parent company for this and this is the customer uh, only one domain can be the primary so this will not be primary okay i'm submitting because i need to add company also here add the same company name here who is the customer here you can see the hierarchy got created parent and, and apc <coughs> Okay, then uh, going back to the last page, adding one more company XYZ. Parent will be parent, company name, marking it as a customer again. Okay, so I created the domain for XYZ. Now I need to add company also for the XYZ. I can keep, I can, you know, I can uh, keep the different name also, but it's good to keep the same name for the simplicity. Otherwise, the developers might confuse. All right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, now uh, let's have a look. Let's make the out of box top as false. Make it inactive. Okay. So if I just do the show matching of true, I have three uh, companies where uh, this uh, apparent is the parent. Okay. So under the global, I should have the parent, and inside that, I should be able to see ABC and XYZ. So let's validate the hierarchy to reflect the same. Okay, so to validate the hierarchy, I write the domain here, go to configuration. And uh, here we have an option to validate the domain hierarchy. So you can see it successfully completed. Close it. Let's do it one more time. Uh, if there are any issues this uh, you can see this flag okay so it identify no issues it ran the domain hierarchy successfully so refresh the window And let's see if I can see the parent and uh, ABC. Okay, so here I can see parent and other uh, uh, other domains also, right? Okay, so we can even see the domain map, right? So let's have a look on the domain map. So as of now, only these are the active ones. So in domain map, you would be able to see only the active ones. 
So that's how we can create the domain and their companies. Okay, so as in this drop down, we are able to see all companies. So let's log out and log in again. So ideally, we should be able to see only the active uh, parent and the uh, child. Okay, now it's reflecting correctly here. So that's how we can make uh, the companies and the domains added here. Now, uh, no, uh, let's see how we can create the users in the specified domain. So uh, the key to have the users in the domain is, so I'm creating uh, one new user, say uh, test user and uh, test is the first name, user is the last name. This is the company, so ABC domain. So if you click on manage domain, uh, here also we can manage and uh, we can define the domains explicitly but if i don't define it it will automatically drive from company okay so let's save it and see uh, whether the company came or populated correctly so i just saved it if i click on uh, manage domain i can see the global let's have a look okay so i can see the global because uh, you know in top i have selected as global okay so let's change the domain here and let's say if xyz and we will create another user in xyz so um let's see uh, if i click on create new if i just click on manage we can see the user will be created by default in the domain which is selected on the head okay so uh, if we search for the company also let's say uh, xyz so you can see uh, the xyz company is also there so uh, we need to select the proper company and the uh, associated token. Okay. So this is how we can select uh, or we can create the user. Now, uh, when we are working, we need to keep few things in mind. So let's say incident. Okay. So if I'm going to see all incidents uh, in list view, uh, it's good to have the company and domain populated here. So uh, say let's let's uh, here uh, let's add the company and the domain also add it. So if you add company and domain, it will help you to see in which domain this record is added. Okay, it will help you to do the proper troubleshooting in the domain separated environment. So this uh, this is the way we need to add uh, or we can customize the. Uh, this list view header to add the company and domain we can also update uh, the form layout and we can have the domain over there also so as of now you cannot see the domain here so to customize the form go right uh, go to the form right click here configure configure and then you can go to the form layout i'll add it to next to assign to and uh, you can have the domain add it okay domain is Added here, move the domain up next to assign to. Sorry, okay, okay. So, this is uh, I know I'll, I'll walk you through like how it's working in the domain separated environment, how the new form is created, and uh, just to let you know at this point of time because here I have selected a specified domain, so a new entry for this form layout got created in this domain. So you can see the domain I have is selected here and this record is created in global domain. So if I click on the global, this field not be visible because I changed that field layout in the specified XYZ domain. And so uh, some of the forms can be customized based on the domains. Uh, that's all for this tutorial. Thank you so much. My name is Rajesh Chan. Thank you.